everyone, this is Ms. Barb from the Sterling Heights Library coming to you from home uh, to show you another Craft for Maker Monday. Now I should let you know that I am doing our video from home today, but the library is open for curbside pickup only. Starting today, you will be able to place items on hold at the library. You will not be able to come into the library building. You will not be able to browse or use the computers, but you can either go onto the computers, you can go online, and you can put items on hold online. We will notify you when the items become available, or you can call us at the library because library staff will be there during our normal business hours. Library staff will be in the building and we can pull the items that you're looking for and uh, we will let you know when they are there and you can come to the library and pick them up. When you do pick them up, the procedure will be that you come into the parking lot and you will park in a numbered parking spot and you will call the library and say that you're outside waiting for your items. Someone from the library will find your items, they will check those out to you, and a library staff member will bring those items out to your car. Unfortunately, uh, due to health precautions with uh, the COVID situation, you will not be able to come into the building. Also, the building is under construction right now, so there's not a whole lot that you would be able to do in the building. And with that being said, if you call and ask for items, please bear with us that it might take us a, a couple of minutes extra long to find the items because some items have been moved around and uh, we're used to finding things in certain places and they're not where we're used to them being because of the construction. But it is great that we have curbside pickup, which is starting today. If you have any questions about it, call us at the library at 586-446-2665 and we'll be able to help you out with any questions that you have. Now the craft project for today, for our Maker Monday, I thought that we would do something, typically it's called string art. We're going to call this one yarn art because I thought using a piece of yarn, it would fill in the little gaps in this project a little bit more. And uh, I just thought it was really pretty, the yarn that I found. And I don't find string that has metallic pieces in it quite the way that the yarn is that I chose today. And the theme for it today is uh, for Father's Day because Father's Day is coming up soon. So I thought that for the string art, we would do something that said, uh, I heart dad, but you can do whatever pattern that you want to. I'll show you how to put a pattern on paper and how to put the pins around it, but you can do whatever pattern you want. This is just my suggestion, something to do for Father's Day. So without further ado, let's get into how you make the craft. Give me just a second and I'll show you. The first thing that you'll need for the project is to get some bulletin board material, uh, some cork boards. This was cork boards that I purchased at Office Max or Office Depot. Uh, it is a brand called Foray. It came as a pack of four and each one is 12 by 12 inches. You can change the size of it and you can change the size of your project as well, depending on what you want to do. I just thought that for my purposes today, to show you how to make this project, that I would use uh, 12 by 12 as the size. Now, what I've already done is I already took two of the cork boards um, because they are a little bit skinny and my pins are a little bit long. I'll show you one of the pins. So my pin's a little bit long in comparison. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to see, but I don't want a small, um, I want my pin to go through uh, a bulkier area if the pin is only just in the one cork, just in the one cork like this, then a lot of it is sticking out. And when you're doing your project, you will have a tendency for the pins to pull out when you're pulling on the yarn or on the string, even if you're very careful. So by putting it through two, you'll still have plenty of room left on the pin. And you don't need to put the pins all the way through both corks. 
um, as long as it's through um, at least halfway through that second one, then that should give you a really sturdy base for the project. So I already took two of my cork boards and these two are already glued together and gluing them. I just use plain old Elmer's school glue, uh, just regular old glue and just um, put glue all over one of the sides, uh, making sure that I got the edges too. And so it's glued all around here. And then I just sandwiched two pieces together. When I put my pin in, I'll go ahead and put it through both. Now you can see with my pin that I still have plenty of room left where I can put my string or my yarn through. I'm gonna set this one down. The next thing that I thought, instead of just having plain cork board, it looks a little bit uh, boring this way, I thought that I would dress it up by putting a piece of, a piece of cloth behind the board. And you can do different things with your cloth. You can, um, you can choose fabric from a store. You could use fabric from home. If you don't want to use fabric, you could even use, um, you could use uh, pretty paper. You could use wrapping paper. I thought for mine, which is buried underneath my pins, I actually took an old pair of blue jeans and I thought that this would make a nice background for my board. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to wrap it around the board and I'm just going to staple it to make sure that it's uh, well adhered. Give me just a moment to do that. Depending on the fabric that you choose, it may be a little bit difficult using a stapler in the back of the fabric. Uh, as you may have noticed, I did have a little bit of issue where I was going over some of the seams and some of the thicknesses. If you are having problems using a stapler, the other option that you have is to use some thumbtacks that have flat heads on them. Unfortunately, I don't have an example to show you right now, but basically a push pin that just has the flat head instead of one uh, that has a head that sticks up and protrudes, you would use one that's just like a flat push pin that when you push it into something, it has a flat surface, it aligns with the surface and it doesn't stick up. That would be another option. But I do now have this part completed. And the next thing that I need to do is find the pattern that I want to use. And the pattern that I chose to use today for Father's Day, I thought this would be a nice project. And I have a pattern which is going to say, I love dad, or excuse me, I heart dad. So because the pattern is a little bit bigger than the sheet of paper I was able to print from, I printed this out from my computer you can find all sorts of patterns there if you uh, do a Google search, an internet search, and if you look for coloring pages, just look for something that's a very simple uh, coloring page or coloring sheet to do. The other option would be to go into a word processing program or into some sort of art program where you can make your own pattern up. And because I printed this from the computer, it did leave a little, uh, a little line here where it wouldn't print through to the very edge of the sheet. So I'm just going to cut that part off and then I'm going to tape it onto this part right here. Now I have my pattern cut out and I cut off the excess areas on the edges because I just didn't really need them and they were going to get into my way. The other thing that you can do if you're cutting a pattern is if you are using a different size template or a different size bulletin board, if you need to, you can actually cut out individual uh, components of it. Say if you wanted to have the A a little bit closer to the D, maybe you didn't have enough room or maybe you just think it like, you think it will look better that way. If you want to, you can actually cut out these little pieces and when you put them on the board, just uh, scooch them over so that they're a little bit closer to each other. If you want your letters closer together, uh, you have all sorts of options with this. There's a lot that you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and take my pattern and because the heart 
goes a little bit further down. It's a little bit longer. I'm going to try and get most of that above this seam that's right here in my fabric. So I'm going to set it down here and try and get it fairly centered, fairly, uh, fairly even up and down and side to side. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, this is a homemade gift. It gives it, as my mother would say, it gives it character when it's a little bit uh, not perfect looking. So I'm going to take my pins and I'm starting out with red pins. The first thing that I want to do is I want to outline around the heart. And when you put the pins in, you'll go almost all the way through, but not quite through. You can adjust the pins later and uh, you can pull them back up if you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these in. I've got my very bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and tie down where the top will be so my sheet of paper doesn't move around too much. And everything else looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the rest of those pins. And when I put them in, I'm going to space them maybe about the width of my pinky finger, maybe about a pinky finger apart as they go around. The pins that I'm using are map pins. And map pins, I purchased these at Office Max or Office Depot. I believe they're both the same store at this point. Um, so map pins are a little bit shorter than regular pins. They're not like the pins that you would get at uh, Joanna Fabric or at Michael's. They wouldn't be from a craft store. These are a little bit shorter than that, maybe about half the length of those types of pins. So make sure that when you do the project, go, don't get really long pins. Make sure that you get the shorter ones. Otherwise your needle's going, your pin's gonna stick way, way up and it just won't work out so well. So I'm starting out with the red pins and I'm going to use those to outline around the heart. And I've got the top one and the bottom one already done just to kind of hold my paper in place while I put the rest of them around. And uh, that's going to be about a quarter inch, about a pinky's width apart. Once you have one of your shapes, uh, all pinned into place, then you can go on to the other shapes. I happen to use red for this one because the pack of pins that I purchased had three different colors. It was red and white and black. And I think I'm going to go ahead and outline the rest of these in black. Um, the reason why is, you can see all of my pins here, about half black and half white. I don't want to run out of pins when I do the other sections and I'm not going to purchase additional pins just to use for this craft. That would be silly because I'm not sure if I will ever need these pins again. So if I have the need for more pins, what I can do is take one of the white pins. I suppose I could do it with a black pin too and use white out, but I could take one of the white pins and take a Sharpie marker and it's very easy for me to use a Sharpie marker and color in the pin head and make it look black, at least from the top. So just kind of turn it around and make it look like it's a black pin. That way it's very, uh, very difficult to tell, especially from the top. If you look from the bottom, you'll say, ah, I see a little black there but you know what, that's gonna be pressed against the fabric. No one's gonna see that part. So I'm going to set this aside in case I need extra black pins later. So I will put it on the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the outlines of all of the letters and I'm going to use black. If I run out of black pins, then I'm going to use a Sharpie marker on one of the white ones and I'm going to color it in black.
Finally, everything is pinned properly. Uh, if it was only as easy in real life, if it was quite as quick to um, use the marker and change these from white to black. I could have, of course, left them white, but myself, I'm very fussy, so I would have wanted to have black, white, black, white, and have a perfect pattern. And if I ended up with two of the same color, well, that would have ruined it for me personally, but you can do it in different ways or you can um, move your pins around a little bit. It's completely up to you. I just wanted to make this uh, a little bit perfect because I'm showing it for a craft today. So that was the easiest thing for me to do. Put all my other pins on the side. Okay, all my other pins are on the side because we're finished with the pins. The next thing that we need to do, and this part, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. I think the easiest thing for me to do is going to be using a pair of scissors. What I'm going to do, what we need to do, is we need to carefully leave the pins in, but pull the paper up from around the pins. So as I do that, I'm keeping my fingers on top of the pin heads, and I'm pulling the paper up around them so I don't pull my pins out. And I think it would be easiest if I actually cut the different parts away from each other. Uh, so I'm just dealing with a little piece of paper at a time. So cut or rip, I suppose I could just rip it too. But I only want small areas to work at at a time. So I'm going to rip all of this sheet of paper out from underneath here. And when I'm finished, do the little part right now. When I'm finished, all you will see will be the pins in the pattern. Just like that, you'll see the pins in the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rip off all the paper that's behind it. Again, it's a little bit time consuming, but you know what, this is a really cool craft. So let's go ahead and rip that off. It's an awful lot of prep for this craft, but at least we are ready now to actually put on the yarn or string, whichever you prefer onto the craft. Now you have a lot of different alternatives for making this craft. You can either use the cork board with the um, map pins. You could use a piece of wood. You could perhaps stain a piece of wood. You could paint it, put fabric over it, and you could use linoleum nails. You could also use a string. If you wanted, you could use string for it. Um, it's actually called string art. Um, there's different types of string. Some of it is very skinny, little strands of string something like this, which is very, very tiny strands. And I also have string, which is like this, which is a little bit thicker. I've actually decided today for this project to use yarn because I think yarn will fill the craft in a little bit more and it will, I think, look a little, little bit nicer uh, for the thing that I want to do. Uh, make it look a little bit thicker and it will be a little bit faster to do because I won't have to do quite as much intricacy with uh, weaving the weaving the string or the yarn in and out so fast. Now these are, uh, this is yarn that I purchased at Meyer. This one is called Mandala yarn and it actually has some sparkle to it, which you should be able to see. And I thought that just the different shades of blue would look really nice against the blue denim. And then for the heart, I'm simply going to do the heart in just a red yarn, which also came from Meyer. So to start out, I'm going to start with, um, actually going to go ahead and start with the red right here for the heart. Now, when you're doing this, you will want to lift in case your pins fell, uh, or if you pushed your pins a little bit too far into the fabric, or into the bulletin board, you may have to go around and pull them up just a tiny bit. Obviously, you don't want to pull them out of the bulletin board, but you need, might need to pull them up a little 
and I see there's a couple of pins that I just don't like the way that they're placed, so I'm gonna change them a little bit um, just to make it look, in my eyes, a little bit nicer. So there, I've changed that around. I'm going to get to the end of my string. And, uh, or I shouldn't call it string. It's actually yarn that we're using. This is yarn, not string. And I'm going to choose just a random, um, a random pin. I think I'll choose this one over here. And I'm going to start out by tying my yarn in a knot right around there. And I'm leaving a little bit of a tail on it. I can always go back later and I could use a pair of scissors and I can snip that off, but I just want a little bit of a tail just so I can remember where I stopped, or excuse me, where I started. The first thing that I want to do is go around and actually make my outline all around my project. So I'm going to take my yarn and as I go to each, each of the pins, I'm going to wrap the yarn around the head of the pin very gently. You don't want to pull on it. You want to pull just enough so it's tight, but you don't want to pull so much that you actually pull it up out of your project. And you're probably going to need both hands so that a finger can help with wrapping it around and the other finger is holding the yarn down in place so it doesn't want to uh, jump up over the pin head. And you can either go to the right, to the left, you can alternate one right, one left. It really won't make any difference when you see the finished project. Now that I have my outline done for the first area here around the heart, I'm going to take more string and I'm just gonna kind of randomly interwine it amongst all of the needles, all of the pins, just so that I can make this all filled in. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly find different spots and wind it back and forth just so I can fill in so it will look like my heart is uh, filled in with the red fabric, or excuse me, the red string. And I'll be careful not to go across like this. Uh, otherwise, that will mess up this little um, V shape here for my heart. So I just want to do it so that the string is on the inside. Don't want to mess that part up. Now, there's no way to tell exactly when you were one of your shapes is completed. It's whenever you feel comfortable with it that you feel that it is complete as far as you're concerned. Now, I think that this is pretty well filled. I could fill up more later if I wanted to. I could take a second color of string if I wanted and uh, interweave a second color of string around here. But I think for today, I think that this makes a pretty good heart for what I'm doing. I'm actually gonna just move this needle a little bit there very carefully of course just move that needle over so that or excuse me pin i keep calling them needles just going to move it over a little bit so that um, i've got more of a point there so i'm going to take my last piece of yarn and i'm going to cut this piece off and leave myself plenty of room plenty of extra yarn here so that i can tie my knot so i'm going to take this around my final pin and I'm going to tie a knot around that last pin. So now I've got a knot and tie it of course pretty tight and I'm going to now snip off that little bit here and the little tail from the very beginning and now the heart is complete. Now I have several other things to do. I still need to outline my eye, and then of course the letters D-A-D, because this is in honor of Father's Day next week. 
uh, or excuse me, next weekend, I thought that we would do something that would be a nice gift for dad. So I'm going to continue with the I, the D, A, and D. Okay, so I finished off the eye just the same way as I did with the heart by tying a piece of string or excuse me yarn, tying it around one of the pin heads and then tying a knot in it. I'm going to continue with the D, A, and D. Now you do need to use a little bit more caution when you're doing the letters like this, D, A, and D, because there is an opening in the center of each of these and you want to make sure that the yarn does not cross over that opening or your letters are going to look kind of uh, garbled or messy. So try and make sure that um, that you don't go across that line. I'm going to start by doing the outline of it first, making a straight lines, straight and curved lines around there. And that way that will help to remind me, don't go into the center area, just go around the outskirts of it. So that's going to be with the D, both of the Ds. And of course with the A2 right in the middle, I don't wanna go through that triangle or across the two legs. And there you have the completed project. I love dad, a great gift for Father's Day. And this is something that I thought would be a really nice project for Maker Monday this time. Father's Day, I always have felt has kind of gotten uh, a little bit lost as a holiday because we're getting, kids are getting out of school, there's graduation parties, there's weddings going on, there's end of school activities, there's just so much stuff going on. And I've always thought that dads uh, didn't quite get as much as they were due. So this would be an awesome project to make for Father's Day. Now, I know it is a little bit more tedious of a project to do. This was very time consuming. As you saw, there was quite a bit of uh, fast forwarding of the video, but this isn't a project that you need to sit and do all at once. You can do it over a period of a couple of days. You can do it all in one day and just take uh, breaks here and there um, because it's it's just all different segments of it. So remember in the project, we started by gluing together two of the cork boards. Uh, we glued together the cork boards, then we covered it with this denim material that I happen to have an old pair of blue jeans, used the denim material. I printed out a pattern, put the pattern on top of the material and then used the pins and outlined all of the pattern and then took yarn in this case instead of string. It's technically most people would call it string art. We're going to call it yarn art. Uh, and then uh, took that yarn and filled in around. And I think it looks pretty awesome. And of course too, the yarn that I used for where it says dad has got a little bit of a sparkle to it. So that just makes it a little bit nicer. This is something that you could put a little hanger clip on the back of the frame so that it could be hung up on a wall or it's something that could simply be just laid up against a wall. Uh, I don't have a wall handy. I will use my string. Uh, you could just kind of lay it up against a wall, whatever you would like to do with it. Uh, your dads will be very appreciative of all of the time and the effort that you put in to make a really cool craft. I hope everyone enjoyed the craft and I hope everybody has a great Father's Day.